The Obama administration will give up U.S. control of the Internet on October 1st. International the summit underway in Dubai could radically change how you use the Internet. At issue is a push by the United Nations to put the web under their control. The Internet. America invented it, and it has proven to be an amazing oasis of freedom. Free speech. Each of us able to speak our views online. And free enterprise. Millions of new businesses able to be opened online without any government pre-approval. But all of that could change. Right now, the Obama administration is trying to push through a radical proposal to give away control of the Internet to foreign countries. From the very first days of the Internet, the American government has maintained domain names and ensured equal access to everyone with no censorship whatsoever. Obama wants to give that power away to an international body called ICANN, which would empower countries like Russia and China and Iran. This internet giveaway poses a great threat to our country's freedom and our national security. Russia and China and Iran don't have a First Amendment. They don't protect free speech, and they actively censor the internet. ICANN could do the same thing, putting foreign countries in charge of what you can say online, prohibiting speech that they disagree with. Foreign governments are already planning to take ICANN and move it overseas so that it not only escapes U.S. law, but in effect turns into a mini United Nations. The United States government is going to give up control of the Internet. And this is one of those issues that I don't think many Americans know about. This is not on the front page above the fold of your paper. It's not splashed across your nightly news. You're not seeing it everywhere on the Internet. So Americans aren't really aware of it nine days before this transfer is about to take place. The Obama administration is pushing through a radical proposal to take control of Internet domains and instead give it to an international organization, ICON, that includes 162 foreign countries to be able to censor speech on the Internet. Do we need more oversight of the Internet? Not by the U.N. I mean, this is like putting Tony Soprano in charge of uh, gambling in uh, Jersey. I mean, it's, this is, what they're doing is they're laying the foundations. If you can tax it and regulate it, you can control it. And if you can control it, you can suppress it. But the transfer of control of the core functions of the Internet is something that many members of this chamber and many Americans agree with. And it's going to be transferred, those core functions, to an a international or foreign body that will include Russia and China and Iran and even Europe transferring uh, that uh, control. And let's make no mistake, the Internet was made in America. The Internet was paid for by American taxpayers at its point uh, of invention. And the Internet has revolutionized the world, revolutionized the form in which we communicate. And not is it just great technology, but it embodies the American idea of freedom of speech. It's all open. Put out your ideas. Some are good, some are bad, some are true, some are false, but it's free. Just like that American idea of free speech. And we have exported that freedom of speech idea to the rest of the world on the Internet. Radically transformed the way people around the world communicate and it was made in America with the American idea of free speech and now nine days from now we're at the cusp of transferring its control to a foreign body that doesn't share that same idea of freedom of speech they have rules in the European Union that will delineate hate speech and offensive speech that has to be taken off the internet not an American idea that's a European idea of free speech. But when you talk about offensive speech, offensive to who? Because I could say, well, uh, Catholics or Christians might hold certain positions and put certain things on the Internet that another group finds offensive. Or the LGBT community might put something on the Internet that another group finds offensive. I'm sorry, in a debate of ideas um, where you have a free flow, um, people can get offended. 
And that's okay. But to shut down speech, even in the European model that's offensive, uh, frankly, to me, is offensive. Why are these negotiations and proposals all secret? What we know was leaked out, and what we do know is, is frightening, what they're trying to accomplish You know, it's, interesting. it's such an interesting topic. When it comes to free speech, you know, it wasn't too long ago that, that speech was controlled by a handful of TV networks, a handful of newspapers, the gatekeepers. They decided what was news. They decided all the news that's fit to print. And if it so happens that they didn't think it was fit to print, that it was inconsistent with their political views, then it didn't get said. The internet is now a place where any one of us can go online and say darn near anything. And I've got to admit, I've read some crazy things on the internet. <laughs> but it's an amazing ability that takes power out of the entrenched elites. That ability to research, to communicate, to get a voice out, to expand virally could never have happened prior to the Internet. Now what do we also know? We also know that whenever there is an oasis of freedom, as surely as night follows day, there will be government regulators who want to get their grubby little mitts on it. That is the nature of government power to want to control, to tax, to regulate, to make sure that freedom needs the prior approval of government. This is essentially um, a power grab by them. They want to insinuate themselves into one of the most successful products and creations we've ever had and, and hand it over uh, to one of the most unsuccessful organizations uh, we've ever had. Originally, President Obama promised that the Fed's handover of the Antitrust Protected Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, or ICANN, would not involve the United Nations. If we fall for, you know, a, a bunch of okie doke Was this yet again a naive move by an incompetent president of the United States, or has this been the plan all along? Time and time again, Congress has failed to pass draconian laws to control the Internet. The Communications Decency Act of 1996, the Intellectual Property Enforcement Act of 2007, the Cybersecurity Act, the Protect IP Act of 2011, and SOPA, to name a few, all failed miserably against the ironclad integrity of the First Amendment. The globalists, scurrying to their den of iniquity at Bilderberg, would hear none of it. Their very fortunes and lives depend on it. The public knows too much already. Control of the internet had to be torn from the protection of the U.S. Constitution. Larry Strickland of the National Telecommunications and Information Administration, a Commerce Department agency which has overseen ICANN since 1998, said, We will not accept a proposal that replaces the NTIA role with a government-led or an intergovernmental solution. Now, after the full weight of Edward Snowden's revelations opened a treasure trove, the United States, in pure Hegelian dialectic fashion, offered to cede control to a multi-stakeholder, i.e. lobbyist-dominated model. That's right, the internet will be in the hands of lobbyists, the very bottom feeders of the whims of globalism. How bad is it? In the intervening years, the United Nations and the European Union had jostled for control of the internet. During a meeting in Dubai, the International Telecommunications Communications Union, the telecom branch of the United Nations, demanded rules governing the internet to be rewritten. Specifically, the international organization proposed deep packet inspection authority that would allow it to monitor and censor content on the internet. The United States walked out of that conference in protest. What appears to be the mundane task of assigning parking spaces for internet businesses will more than likely face in the very near future a level of censorship that will make the free-thinking people of the World Wide Web's head spin. The Inquisition 2.0 The European Union has proposed the creation of a censorship and mass surveillance framework for EU countries funded by the European Commission. The Clean IT Project webpage explains the plan called for police to patrol Facebook and other social networks in search of extremist material and propaganda in addition to allowing users to flag terrorist content and turn others into the police. Well, recently, leading technology companies in the United States, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Microsoft, 
reached an agreement with the European Union to remove, quote, hate speech from their online platforms within 24 hours. Giant U.S. corporations signing on with government to say, we're going to help you censor speech that is deemed unacceptable. And by the way, the definition of hate speech we have seen can be very, very malleable. For example, the Human Rights Campaign, which is active within ICANN, has featured the Family Research Institute, the National Organization for Marriage, and the American Center for Law and Justice, and other conservative and religious groups in a report entitled The Export of Hate. We are facing the very real possibility of speech being censored in the name of hate speech. It is hate to express a view different from whatever the prevailing orthodoxy of the government is. And I would note, just this week, YouTube used its hate speech policy to remove a video posted by counter-jihad that was critical of the Muslim Brotherhood civilization jihad. We are entering very dangerous territory where giant U.S. companies participate in censoring speech because to speak of something like jihad to speak of the Muslim Brotherhood, to speak of the forcible export of Sharia law is deemed inconsistent with political correctness. We saw the leader of France, Mr. Hollande, the White House put out his remarks and simply edited out the portion discussing radical Islamic terrorism. Deleted it from the video. Who in their right mind would want the internet subject to that kind of editing. But to hand over control of the internet to muzzle everybody on the internet, to ensure that what you say is only consistent with whatever is approved by the powers that be, that ought to frighten everybody. In addition to censorship, the ICANN transfer will allow for a globalist taxation scheme. Former Bush administration State Department senior advisor Christian Witten told the Daily Caller, if the UN gains control of what amounts to the directory and traffic signals of the internet, it can impose whatever taxes it likes. It likely would start with a tax on registering domains and expand from there. Transition that stewardship to the global community. Fadi Chahadi has been the CEO at ICANN since 2012. After having negotiated the full-scale globalization of the internet, Chahadi will be aptly rewarded by the New World Order, acting as a senior advisor at Abri Partners, a private equity firm that controls an already monopolized media. Also as a co-chair of the newly formed World Internet Conference in Wuzhen, China. And last but not least, a senior advisor to Klaus Schwab, founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum. Schwab attended Bilderberg in 2016. ICANN's recently for, former CEO, Fadi Shahadi, left ICANN to lead a high-level working group for China's World Internet Conference. Mr. Shahadi's decision to use his insider knowledge of how ICANN operates to help the Chinese government and their conference is more than a little concerning. This is the person who is heading ICON, which we're being told, trust them with our freedoms. Went to work for the Chinese Internet Conference, which, by the way, the Chinese Internet Conference has rightly been criticized for banning members of the press. It's also concerning that ICANN currently employs an individual named Tarek Kamel as senior advisor to the president of ICANN. Now, clearly anyone with a title like that, senior advisor to the president of ICANN, is someone with, with a great deal of expertise and, and dedicated commitment to freedom of the Internet. Would that that were so. Tarek Kamel previously worked for the Egyptian government and is infamous for shutting down Egypt's Internet during the Arab Spring Revolution in 2011. The move led the, the Obama administration to publicly chastise Mr. Camel in an open letter saying, quote, unless you act now in your final hours as minister to reverse the internet cutoff, 
Your name will forever be associated with an unprecedented human rights violation on a national scale and an economic catastrophe triggered by a short-sighted regime's drive for self-preservation. An internal proposed strategy from George Soros' Open Society Justice Initiative calls for international regulation of private actors' decisions on, quote, what information is taken off the internet and what may remain. End quote. Those regulations, the document notes, should favor, quote, those most supportive of open society, end quote. Open society being George Soros's organization. Soros and company, rather than striking directly at free speech progenitors like Infowars.com, are one month away from recklessly pulling the rug out from under everything. Now that ICANN has relinquished control of the medium, globalist institutions can move forward with plans to scrub the internet of all content unacceptable to the global elite and their minions at the United Nations. For anyone who wants a chilling example of where this ends up, <coughs> I would encourage everyone here to go back and read George Orwell's classic 1984. We must keep the internet free, free of taxes, free of regulation, and free of censorship. You look at what the internet has done. It has created an oasis of freedom. One of the great problems with someone trying to start a small business is what are known as barriers to entry. It's often difficult to start a small business because it's expensive. It used to be a few decades ago, if you wanted to start a small business, you had to figure out a good or service to sell. You had to figure out production facilities. You had to figure out storage. And then you needed a distribution network. You needed wholesalers. You needed retailers. You needed display, display space. And you needed advertising. What the internet has done is dramatically reduce the barriers to entry for anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur. You're a man or woman somewhere across the country or even a boy or girl somewhere across the country or across the world and you have an idea, a service you want to sell, a good you want to make, you can put up a website and instantly you've got a national or international marketing ability. You have a portal to communicate with people and anyone can go online and order whatever your good and service is and between that and FedEx or UPS you can ship it anywhere in the world. That is an extraordinary and transformational ability. That freedom. that you don't have to go get anyone's approval. You don't have to go to the board of business authorization if you want to create a new business. The internet is democratizing in that effect. The internet empowers those with nothing except for hopes and dreams to be able to achieve those ambitions. Have you ever come across this kind of error while surfing on the internet? It may be that the web page you're trying to access has been censored.